Now the first step that we want to take is install Slim and set up our base framework structure. Now if you already know how to work with Slim 3, that's absolutely fine. You can go ahead and skip this entire section and you can just download the starter files from the course downloads and follow along from there. So if you aren't familiar with Slim or if you just like to learn how this is all set up, we can go ahead and pull down Slim using Composer. So first step is to grab Composer. Now I have Composer installed globally on my machine so I can just run Composer like that, but you might not. And if you follow the instructions on Composer here, you'll find that you'll have a composer.phar file downloaded. So in that case, you want to run php composer.phar and then any of the commands that will be running. So let's head over to the Slim GitHub page. And if we just scroll down, we can see that to install Slim, this is the package name and this is the version name. So let's go ahead and just copy this and do a composer require on this. And remember, if you're downloading Composer, you want to be in this directory. And of course, if you're running these commands, you also want to be in this directory. So once this is finished, we will have it ready to go and we can start to build our application structure. So over in my text editor, which was an empty folder, I now have vendor composer.json, which just lists all of our dependencies and any other configuration. And we have this vendor folder. So basically what we want to do is load in all of our dependencies. We can do that using the autoload file. So a little bit about the structure of the application. Let's think where the user will land. What I'm going to do is create a public folder within here. And this is where the user is going to land to get to our application. So within your web server, you will want this to point to the public directory and then everything else will just work. So what, now that we've got this public directory, let's go and create a file that the user will land on. That's obviously going to be called index.php. So once we have this up and running, we want some kind of file to bootstrap our application. So this can go anywhere, but I'm going to create a bootstrap directory just in here. And then within here, I'm going to create an app.php file. So within this, we want to basically do a few things. We're going to require in all of our dependencies. So let's start by requiring in. We're going to go back a directory. Vendor autoload.php. So that will just pull in all of our dependencies for us. Pretty straightforward. So now what we want to do is start to instantiate Slim. So we're going to create a new application instance. And from this, we can do everything that we need to do. So to do this, all we do is create an app variable and we create a new Slim app instance. So let's just take a look back to index.php. We're not doing anything in here at the moment. So of course, what we want to do is require in our bootstrap file. So I'll explain more about why we're doing this in just a moment. So we're going to go into bootstrap and then we're going to load in app.php. Now from here, we want to run our application. So of course you can structure your project however you want. But this is generally just the minimum amount that you want to put into index.php. All of your bootstrapping and adding to your container, which we'll learn about in a moment, will go in your bootstrap file here. So now that we have this, what we can do is start to do things like just load up sessions. So why don't we just start sessions? And in fact, we can bump that up. And what we can also do is pass in some configuration options to Slim. So for example, while I'm developing, I want errors to be displayed. So you want to make sure that you turn this off during production. But here I'm going to say display error details, and I'm going to set that to true. Okay, so now that we've done this, we can actually start to test if everything is working. And if you don't know about the concept of roots, we'll take a look at creating a very simple root here. So let's create a root by saying app get we provide the URI which is just the URL that the user will land on and then we have a callback so this will be what is run 
when the user lands on this page. So in here we have a request and a response. Now the request deals with things like request data and anything else like that. So for example, when you post a form, this is how you'll pick up them form values. And a response is how we respond to the request. So whether that's setting some kind of status code or whether it's responding with a view. So now all we need to do to test this out is do something like return home. So we'll check out this in the browser. Let's go ahead and hit this. And I probably made a mistake somewhere. Let's just go and check here. Looks like I haven't appended that properly. So now we see home, perfect. So that is your first route. If you've not worked with routes before, that's how simple it is. Now we're actually gonna be working with controllers through the series, but it's a very simple concept. All we do is we create a class instead of this closure just here. Okay, so now that that's up and running, let's start to look at the other directories that we might have. Well, I have usually when I'm working on small projects, an app folder which contains my roots, whether these point to controllers or not. So all this means is that we're just keeping things nice and separate. And all we need to do down here is require this in. So let's go and require in app roots.php, simple. So if we create a root in here, this will work as normal. So why don't we just go and bring this simple root back just here. So let's return home. And there we go, it works just as, as normal. Now, if I were to change this to something like forward slash home, you'd expect this to work, but it actually says not found. That's because Apache, which is the web server I'm currently running, is looking for a folder called home. So to counteract this, all we do is we create an HT access file that will go ahead and turn URL rewriting on. And of course that needs to be inside of the public directory. So let's just go and create this again, like so. Okay, so inside of here, you'll need to place the following. You can go ahead and grab this from the course downloads, or you can find it on Slim's documentation as well. So now this will work because it picks this up, passes it back through to index.php. What we then do is from here, bootstrap our application, and we know that we're loading in our roots from here, which will then respond to that request. So pretty straightforward, hopefully that makes sense. So now that we've got the basic structure set up, what about any CSS or JavaScript files that we might create? Well, of course, these are publicly accessible resources. Remember our web server will point to public. So inside of here, this is where we can create things like CSS or JavaScript or put any images. So that's pretty much it for our very basic directory structure. In the next video, we're gonna look at going ahead and setting up Twig View, which is a Slim package that allows us to work with Twig within Slim. So let's jump over and set that up as well.